South Australia would have starved. The people were survivors too, and the spirit of Port Adelaide was born. Within 30 years, that spirit created the Port Adelaide Football Club. It became the heart and soul of the district, providing the identity, respect and success the people wanted. It provided a culture not bound by geography, but by an intense desire to succeed against the odds. And that culture provided Australia's most successful senior football club. What I consider the football, the real football clubs of Australia, a real hard-nosed, tough, prepared to work at the game, to develop the game as, as, a, um, as a part of its structure, in, in, particularly in Adelaide, but also in Australia. And Port Adelaide was one of the clubs that I marked as a club. Its list of achievements is endless. 31 premierships, including eight of the last 17. Runner-up on a further 34 occasions. The Stanley H. Lewis Trophy, a record number of times. Most McGarry medal wins. Most leading goal kickers. The list goes on and on. Not forgetting the title of Australian champion four times, a record six premierships in a row. It's a record Port Adelaide wants to take to the AFL. The passion and loyalty of the supporters has not wavered in 124 years. As one of nine clubs, Port Adelaide is supported by 29% of football fans. Even more, 41% attended Port's matches last year. After the advent of the Crows, local attendances fell by 14%. Port defied the trend, recording a 13% increase. Mere trial matches against Geelong and Collingwood proved the club's ability to fill a stadium. And those same fans will attend more games, spend more money and buy more tickets to Football Park when their side is in the AFL. If there is not substantial traditional support behind it, then establishment will be difficult. Football is a game of the people, for the people. So who do the people want? Of the three tenderers, 41% wanted Port Adelaide, while for a single club base side, 79% wanted Port, including 30% of Norwood fans. In a study for the SANFL, 81% saw Port as the best option. Port Adelaide should be South Australia's second AFL team. That was the overwhelming response to our seven nightly news phone poll. The advertiser told a similar story. Nothing in any known survey can find an alternative. The football public want Port Adelaide. Healthy competition is about rivalry, an intangible that can't be manufactured, only harnessed. There certainly is an antagonism towards the Crows, and, and providing it's uh, kept in its right context, that's a very, very good thing. And I think they'd make an ideal club to add to the, uh, to the AFL, in my opinion. I think it'd be just great. Port fans have the least interest in attending Crows games, yet the highest proposed attendance and purchase of football park memberships if Port is the second team. A latent AFL force waiting to be tapped. We've got um, a, a team there that's uh, been a, a traditional competitive team that's dominated the local competition that everybody either hates or loves. And you can understand why people think, well, here's a natural division between one group of football people and another group. And if we can somehow harness those, we've got a natural competitive edge. The public see Port as the Crows' natural rival, nearly 60%. That's a healthy rivalry compared with 14% for Norwood and Sturt. Port Adelaide is already a fierce rival of Adelaide's. Port is still a fiercely working class club and its fans shun Adelaide as a yuppie playground. Off the field, it's the same story. Port Adelaide, Australia's most successful club, hasn't got one official associated with the Adelaide Crows. Port Adelaide should be the second team from South Australia. We've had the contrived now is the time for the AFL to admit Australia's most successful football outfit to the competition. The emotion and the passion that you play for clubs, that could not possibly come from a side that has just won, grabbed one here, grabbed one there. I know that they're all good players, don't get me wrong, but I really think that the thing that they miss out on is not being really part of the growing up and the, uh, uh, the breeding of the player. For 30 years, Port players have moved to the AFL and yet the club has won four of the past six premierships. Last year, another 14 were drafted. 
When you pull on a port jumper, you grow another leg. A similar to this Collingwood situation, I often feel that sometimes ordinary players uh, seem to play a little bit above themselves simply because of the the way the club is and the I think the things that you're taught by the, the peers and the people around you, and I'm certain that that's one of, one of the reasons for uh, Port Adelaide's great success. But quantity is only half the story. For quality, there's Gavin Wanganeen, last year's Brownlow medalist, Nathan Buckley, last year's AFL Rookie of the Year. He saw Port Adelaide as a fairly good uh, role model uh, and a lot of good players had come from there and uh, the place where I was going to gain my most experience and, uh, and football knowledge. Mark Williams captain Collingwood and along with Craig Bradley, Martin Leslie and Danny Hughes rewarded their adopted clubs by winning best and fairest awards. It's the kind of club that once you've been here you always feel part of. I know that Greg Phillips and I, when we came back from Victoria, it wasn't a matter of which club because we always knew we'd end up back here. Port Adelaide continues to provide AFL standard players, products of a winning culture and ability to develop and identify talent. I'm very proud coming from the black and white back in Adelaide and um, they've always had great people behind the club and they've always been, you know, first, if not, they've always been up there. Off the field, Port Adelaide is also a leader. First, like the annual Outback Rally and the Sponsorship Classic each raise funds greater than the entire sponsorship budgets of any other SANFL club. Accordingly, the Port Adelaide marketing plan is innovative, designed to raise revenue, convert sponsors and win support from not only within the football community, but from competing sports like basketball and rugby. Success comes from stability. Just four coaches in the past 40 years, 11 presidents and nine chief executive officers since 1909. It's meant profitability and the building of assets greater than any other SANFL club. In the AFL, Port would generate greater income than any alternative, and that's good news for the SANFL, the AFL and football. If you want the common sense option, listen to people who have enormous experience, no local vested interest, and just the good of competitive, exciting, essay-based football at heart. Since Port's initial bid was thwarted in 1990, the club is focused for 1996. Tangible preparations include a gymnasium, the envy of AFL teams, a complete club facility with a full bar and a restaurant, and a full quota of 40 poker machines in the refurbished auditorium. All this five minutes from Football Park makes it very inviting after a game. I only hope petty jealousies and fears within the SANFL don't short-circuit a Port Adelaide proposal which clearly seems better than any other. The Crows have got the unfortunate situation of trying to bring these people, you know, all the teams into their grouping. But for us to come in as a Port Adelaide side, recruiting as we must, and everybody knowing the style of football we play, it'll be a lot easier for us uh, rather than the other sides that have come in recently. Sponsors have also made their intentions clear. Two national companies, Scott's Transport and Cash Converters, are, like the club, ready to go in 96. Many others want to support the club, the value being Port Adelaide's brand separation from other AFL clubs. Naturally, an extensive and detailed business plan along with marketing and football strategies is also in place. Port Adelaide is the perfect AFL package. It generates real football emotion from South Australia's biggest, strongest and most fanatical supporter base outside the Crows. If common sense has anything to do with the decision, there can only be one choice for 1996. For all the same reasons we've come to hate them, Port must join the AFL. If you don't love them, you hate them. That's real football rivalry from a culture so different from the Adelaide Crows. It's the only true rival. Port Adelaide has the heritage, the facilities, the financial and marketing expertise, and the best-known football name outside the AFL. Port Adelaide can take to the national stage a football club with real heart, real soul, and a burning desire. A club proud of the past, confident of the future. Port Adelaide, the people's choice the only choice.